um, how to round numbers. Uh, I recommend number one if rounding is very challenging for you and you want to know why you round. Then if you feel really comfortable with rounding and you understand why rounding works with the vertical number line, then I would definitely recommend going with option two. So with option one, let's read the question. Re uh, round the following number to the place of the underlying digit. So we always want to make sure we're keeping in mind which digit that is. So with our vertical number line, I'm trying to find what the number would round up to if it rounded up, and I'm trying to find what it would round down to if it rounded down, and then I'm trying to find that midpoint. The midpoint is usually one of the most challenging for kids to find. So if I were to round this number right here up, that would round to 2 and 40 hundredths because this right here, uh, this right here is a 3 in the tenths place, so it would round up to a 4. Any digit after that would go to a 0. When we're rounding, this is one of the other things that uh, was a common mistake. You have to remember that any digit after that underline when you're rounding would go to a 0, okay? So no matter if you're rounding up or down. Now, since this is a decimal, that 0 is not really necessary, but I'm still putting it there because it really helps me with finding that midpoint. If I were to round this number down, the number would stay the same. So that would round to 2 and 3 tenths, also known as 2 and 30 hundredths. If I'm trying to find that midpoint, okay, the reason I put that 0 is because since these are decimals, I know that this is 40 hundredths and this is 30 hundredths. If I were to think about the number 30 and 40, what would come right in between? Well, I still have everything before. By the way, just a reminder, everything before that underlined digit stays the same, okay? So I still have that two, I still have that decimal, although that one looks a little funky. That still looks funky, but you got the picture. Um, right in between 30 and 40 hundredths is 35 hundredths, okay? So my next step after I have what it would round up to, what it would round down to, and that midpoint, I need to find out where this number lies on this number line. And this number is going to lie right there, really close to that high point. So that's 2 and 39 hundredths. Since it's above this midpoint, this midpoint tells you everything. If it's below that midpoint, it rounds down. If it's at that midpoint or above, it rounds up. Since this is above the midpoint, it rounds up to 2 and 40 hundredths. Now, the way that I learned this and the way that your parents probably learned this um, and the way I do encourage you to practice if you really understand why this works I do encourage you to practice with looking next door. So it kind of has a saying, and it changes based on who says it, but one of the ways it's said is, look next door, five or more, let it soar, which means raise it up, or five or more, raise the score, either way, uh, four or less, let it rest. Letting it rest kind of just shows you it's not going down, it's staying the same, okay? So... If I take my number, 2 and 39 hundredths, this is underlined, I look next door, 5 or more, let it soar, raise the score, whichever one you prefer, it is 5 or more. So this number would be raised, it would raise the score to 2 and 4 tenths, also known as 2 and 40 hundredths. Reminder that everything after becomes a zero. For this number, for decimals, um, it's easy to leave off that zero, but the reason I'm wanting to remind you that we put those zeros is because if I round a number such as 532 to the nearest hundreds, which would end up being 500, if I left off those zeros, 
Well, 5 is a lot different than 500, so that's why I want to remind you guys that we have those zeros. So for this answer, we have 2 and 40 tenths, or I'm two, sorry, 2 and 40 hundredths, also known as 2 and 4 tenths, okay? Um, question 2. Once again, I'm going to show you both ways. I'm going to do it a little quicker from now on. Uh, Doug wanted to buy snacks at the movie theater. The total was $34.97. Uh, $34.97. How much money will it cost? Will he need to cover the costs? Round to the nearest dollar. Rounding to the nearest dollar is something adults do all the time. Because when I'm in the grocery store, if something costs $34.97, I don't know what costs that in the grocery store. But anyways, if something costs $34.97... I'm honestly not going to track it as $34.97. I'm going to track it as $35. Okay? And I'm going to show you why. So if I have $34.97 and I'm rounding to that nearest dollar, that nearest dollar is that ones place. Okay? If I were to round down, I would be letting it rest at $34. If I were to round up, I would round it up to $35. Right in between those is $34.50, okay? This number of $34.97 is just right below that $35. Since it's above that midpoint, it would round up to that $35, okay? Um, if I were to do the checking next door... I would just, let me just zoom in here. I'll do this up here. I would check next door, five or more, raise the score, four or less, let it rest. I'm raising that score to $35. Okay. Question three. Round five and 148 thousandths to the place value named. So, in the first one, I'm rounding it to the nearest tenths, okay? You can start this by, um, by writing this number again. So, 5 and 148 thousandths. I'm rounding it to the nearest tenths, so I first want to underline that place value. Reminder, if you're having trouble with determining what the place value is, you are welcome to write a place value chart around this. Now, I was just watching one of the other teacher's videos, and if you were in my class or my math group, you might have seen our place value chart look a little different because one of the students had a really great idea on how to write that, and you guys know I steal your ideas all the time. So, when I would write a, a place value chart for my class, I put that decimal on a line, okay? And we just draw that decimal all the way down because we know that our decimals don't move. Um, if we are multiplying by tens or dividing by tens, we know that it's the digits that move and the decimals always stay the same. So I just kind of write that as the line in between the ones and the tenths. That really helps solidify in my mind that that's not a place value. Okay, because sometimes if we have that space there, it really makes it to where we want to move numbers into that. So whichever way works for you, this is what I found works for me. And a couple of my students work with um, this way and some of them work with the other way. So whichever one works for you, that's what math is all about, figuring out what works. Okay, so if I'm rounding to the tenths, I know I can look next door. Okay, five or more. Raise the score, four or less, let it rest. This is four or less, so I'm letting it rest. My answer is five and one tenth, also known as five and one hundred thousandths, okay? Um, when we're dealing with decimals, once again, these zeros really don't have to be there. They can, or you can leave those off because they're after that decimal place. Now, if I were to do this again, you can create a vertical number line if that's what, help, what helps you as well. Um, now, if I'm doing this again, 
I can say, you just create a little place value chart. I should probably do this smaller since I have one other one to do. I need three lines. So five and 148 thousandths. I am rounding to the nearest hundredth this time. And you can also label at the top. You can label this tenths. This one one hundredths. This one thousandths. There's so many different ways to draw places. Sorry about that. Come here. Um, so when I'm rounding to the nearest hundredths, once again, looking next door, five or more, raise the score, four or less, let it rest. Well, eight is definitely more than five. So if I were thinking about this visually, I would think about that midpoint being as uh, five and 145, okay? So that would be where the midpoint is. This is above that midpoint. This is going to be five and 15 um, hundredths or 150 thousandths. Uh, now in the last one, I still have my same number, five and 148, I'm sorry, five and 148 thousandths. Rounding to the nearest one this time, looking next door, well, that's certainly less than four. My midpoint for this number would be five and five tenths. My high point would be six. My low point would be five. This is definitely rounding down to that five. And since there's just a decimal, you really don't have to even write the decimal, but you could. But just so you know, all of these zeros, and in this one, the decimal and the zeros are all not mandatory. You do not need to have those. Last question, round two and 601 hundredths to the nearest place value. So I need four lines. Ooh, these decimals are great. <laughs> they almost look like little sixes. <laughs> So two and six hundred and one thousandths. First number I'm rounding it to is the tenths. Looking next door. That's definitely less than four. So that rounds down to two and six tenths. Okay, this time I'm not even gonna write the zeros. Um, if I were to think about were to think about that as a vertical number line. I would round down to two and six tenths. I would round up to two and seven tenths. The midpoint would be two and 65 hundredths. This is right at, right, like right at, basically just a smidgen above that low point. So it would be rounding down. The next one I'm rounding it to is the hundredths. I can even use the same thing if I were rounding to this hundredths. That's a zero right there. Right next door is a one. If I were to round down, this would be two and 60 hundredths. If I were to round up, this would be two and 61 hundredths. The midpoint would be two and um, 605 thousandths. This is really close, once again, to that low point. So this would round down to two and 60 hundredths. Now this is a weird situation where technically you don't even have to have that zero still. So you could go ahead and erase that zero and it would look like you rounded to the tenths, but you actually rounded to the hundredths. I'm gonna write the zero because it makes me feel more comfortable in that situation, <laughs> but you are happy, more than welcome to not have that zero even. For the ones, I'm looking at my ones place, looking right next door. That's definitely five or more. So that's gonna round up to uh, three. Oops, round up to three. If you were thinking 